here at Heffel, it's always a thrill to deal with works by Lauren Harris, but when we were presented with not one, but three absolutely incredible oil sketches of Harris's three most important subjects, we were amazed. These three works are Lake Superior Sketch 11, From Berg Lake Evening, and Arctic Sketch 15. Each are first class examples and have been in the collection of the same family for almost 90 years. The story of that stewardship begins, in a way, at Union Station. Toronto's Union Station was completed in 1927 and was co-designed by one of Canada's most important architects, John Lyle. Educated at Yale and Les Ecoles de Beaux-Arts in Paris, Lyle's first building in 1905 was the Royal Alexander Theatre, and the only instructions he was given was build the most beautiful theatre on the continent. His 1929 design of the Runnymede Public Library, though, was based in his search for a more Canadian aesthetic in the arts. For it, he drew inspiration from rural Canadian architecture and sourced local materials for its construction. That search for a Canadian style led him, as you might imagine, to the group of seven, and most particularly, Lauren Harris. Lyle and Harris formed a connection based on mutual admiration, and this connection extended to their children. John's daughter Nora and Lauren Harris Jr. were also friends. And around 1936, they arranged to meet at Toronto Studio Building, which was custom built as studio space for the group of seven. From the many Lauren Harris works stored there, Nora selected these three works. We know where this happened and approximately when, because each of these three works appear listed as location studio building in the inventory that Doris Mills completed for Lauren Harris in 1936, which includes ink sketches of the works by Hans Jensen. On that day, with an impeccable eye, Nora selected these works, and they have been lovingly cared for by Nora and then by her descendants for most of a century. All three of these works by Lauren Harris come from the late 20s or the early 30s, really when he was at the peak, the apex of his landscape period. It really shows a mature artist exploring three different realms, each of which has come to characterize the very best of his landscape painting. And Lake Superior Sketch 11 delves into that fully. This sketch and others like it from the end of the 20s really allowed Harris to explore his ideas about connections between our own existence and the more universal. The clouds reflecting off the water in this, both illuminating the land, allow us to ponder that type of connection and unity that he was so interested in exploring and trying to provoke in his audience. Lake Superior was a place that Harris returned to again and again throughout the 20s and as he revisited the same sites and the same sort of scenes and compositions, the pictures became more and more ethereal, more and more transcendent. This sketch from Berg Lake Evening is a remarkable testament to Harris's skills to condense sort of the grand and the majestic onto his 12 by 15 sketching panels. By this point, at the end of the 20s or by the early 30s, Harris really was unbelievably adept at taking these massive ideas, distilling them to their most essential component. The results of that are we get these wonderful visions of a world most people seldom get to experience and see. It's in the Rocky Mountains that sort of the characteristics of the landscape really favored Harris's process of simplification. He was able to ignore the detail and sort of the minutia of the world around him and get at these basic geometries. Harris's artwork evolved throughout the 1920s, painting the inland sea of Lake Superior, painting the mountain peaks of the Rocky Mountains. It might seem inevitable that Harris would find his way to the Arctic after his work in Lake Superior and the Rockies. He brings together many of his most sort of successful subjects in a convincing, dramatic, but also novel way. These are new areas for him to explore. You can sense that excitement in the work. This sketch is brightly lit, luminous shoreline mountains, eerie glaciers behind them, and then this foreboding, dark, cloud-filled sky in the distance bring together as a fitting representation, the connection between beauty and danger that's so characteristic of this remote region of the world. For Harris, these Arctic works really represent the culmination of his exploration of the Canadian landscape, and it seems almost as if when he was done with these, it provided him the freedom and the sense of completeness to move on fully into the abstract realm. All three of these works are Lauren Harris at his very best, really exploring the regions that meant so much to him, 
and subsequently have meant so much to Canadian art.